Home. The word itself evokes a feeling of warmth, even if our homes never provided such tenderness. To recognize a place, a person, a feeling of home expands my place of belonging in the world. It is such an honor and joy to call someone my home. Upon our meeting, our conversations, touches and gazes all combine and form a feeling of belonging, not necessarily to one another, but within the shared moment the shared feelings, to root within bonds of tenderness and care, to nourish our bodies that allow us to feel at home. I am in awe of this journey called life. Upon returning from a little trip that I went to, a small distant island in a small village with very few people I realized that our everyday lives can be lived the same way we, we do when we go out on holidays when we're out on trips we push ourselves to discover to see and explore so I decided that I would do the same hideout where I went to almost every day with my homemade kombucha, my journals, my little poem books, and a book to read. I've been reading this book called Drinking from the River of Light that has really inspired my journey towards self-expression as a form of art. I realized while carrying out this lifestyle that we can change the way we live every day if we choose consciously to take that action, take ourselves out and spend moments in nature, moments alone. spaces that we find home and so having to live alone self-care has been the grounds upon which I'm able to remain strong and find a place of belonging to nourish myself with home-cooked food to stop and look at the sky and take in the moment to sit and smell a delicious scent and to read poems and write poems from deep within. It is by these practices that I find I can truly care for myself. Having these practices has been the grounds upon which I'm not just finding a place of belonging to rest, but these Practices are pushing me forward to grow, to be a better person, to be a better version of myself, with no one else to compare it.
first YouTube video. Yes, let's get let's get into it. I'm a third culture kid from Thailand, Bangkok. I was born in India in a state called Gujarat, but I never lived there. I was born there and I traveled there every summer to visit my family. Most of my time was spent in Thailand. I went to a school where a lot of my classmates were planning to go abroad and it's a school I moved to from a relatively like cheap school to like one of the most elite schools in Bangkok. So it was like a sudden shift. Almost everyone I knew were planning to go abroad and so it was just like logical for me at that time to think of like, I wanted to study philosophy. At that time in Thailand, they didn't have bachelor degrees for philosophy, at least not in English. And so I had no other choice but to look for universities abroad and somehow I just made my way to New Zealand. New Zealand's Maori name is Aotearoa, so I like to call it Aotearoa. It means the land of the long white cloud. After that, I came here to the Netherlands. I've been here almost two years now. I came here to do my uh, a research master's in uh, philosophy. I'm a trained philosopher. I will be graduating this September. Mm. I'm so Since movement has been a big theme in my life, I thought I'd talk about you know the struggles of being a third culture kid and having to move around. I just don't know anyone like me, so I wanted to create content for those like me so we can share our struggles together. So having grown up in a country where people don't look like me wasn't a struggle, but there were some struggles. In Thailand, I was Indian, even though like I've lived there my whole life. Uh, people saw me as Indian, not that it was a bad thing, but I was just never Thai. And in India, never fully Indian, always this standard upon which people would try and measure how Indian you were. I've been told that, oh, you're not Indian, <laughs> you don't have an Indian passport. So I've always faced duality, and I like to think of it as liminality, in that in-between space of either or or neither, <laughs> or in this third space. And that has always been a theme in my life. Going outside of Thailand was sort of like, how do I introduce myself? You know, who am I? Like, where am I from? Now that I've moved to the Netherlands and I'm living in a fourth a different country, I feel the countries don't really matter. I mean, countries are basically man-created ideas of drawing lines on a map, Instead of finding countries as a place of belonging, in my bachelor's, I started to think more about my body. I've always, after having moved, wondered what, where or what home is supposed to be. Even within New Zealand, like I moved to different houses and living here in the Netherlands, moved to different houses. This idea of home as always shifting has been a constant theme in my life and I like to think of it as a snail to compare that to an animal. I'm so proud of you. Mm. Snail always is born with a shell and that's his home. That takes his home with him. A snail always carries its home on its back. And I've been thinking about how we carry our bodies we're embodied beings. I have written an essay about the body, inspired by the, bo the body as being a home. And that idea also is connected to a song. I think it's called Home Body by Nai Palm. That song really spoke to me during the time where I was really conflicted about what home is. Sometimes I just accept like home is, you know, moving around like I'm not in one place and I have to learn to accept that. Sometimes I'm just like, yeah, that's really how I feel. It is, like home is in, in your body, basically. It's a very unconventional way 
of understanding what home is. I mean, the this the space that I've just created to upload this video online is basically a temporary home for me. This platform is basically a space for which I can remain at home for a few minutes. I'm creating my own home. Taking home and making it more fluid and giving it an online platform or giving it other spaces in this physical world really open your sense of identity. Not to romanticize having to move around because some people don't have a choice to, but to move even though they don't want to move. Every time you move, you have to create a new social circle. You have to let go of people, live in different countries, play long distance. And so there is this aspect of pain that comes along with moving and letting go. And that has only added to my emotional maturity. Elaichi. It comes at a cost of being okay with, if something changes, you have to accept that change. And there is no possibility to take any action and life does move you physically, metaphorically. You have to allow that to happen. There is no such thing as a permanent home in any case. Home as something fluid, like the mucus of a snail. I feel like maybe biracial people would also kind of relate of not being able to fit in a certain box. When hanging out with like certain kinds of people, you become hyper aware of how they behave and how they interact. So by moving around, you because you want to still connect to a social circle, you develop skills to adapt very quickly. Which is good in a way that it allows you to really blend in and make your way through the world but at the same time i do feel like it does take away an aspect of your identity that doesn't fit in quite perfectly and i feel like to be able to express yourself as you are is the highest form of kindness you can give to yourself and that also is one of the purpose for my channels to be able to self-express and to allow that expression in various different forms to allow that creativity to expand wherever it wants to and also creative self-healing creative self-expression as healing has been a theme in my life at least very strongly this year and so i want to create a space online create a home a metaphorical home a temporary home for people like me or not where they can come and we can share our journeys and figuring out what home means to us just have a really nice place of belonging even though it's temporary I've never found such a space where I could fully express myself as it is. In school, there's always a standard of writing you must conform to. Except in your personal journals or, you know, little poem books or art books. And that is where I feel you find the freedom to fully express. Even then, you hold yourself back, I feel. What should I do? What should I draw? What should I write? I really want to practice allowing myself to express whatever ideas I have in different forms because I couldn't find it at school, at university I'm creating this space a shared space on a side note I'm a really cheesy person so you can expect some cheesy content. I made some dal makhni 